Hello and welcome to another Edexcel IGCC ICT Pass Paper question. This is a specimen paper and we are now up to question three. Question three, Laura plays online games with other people. Laura notices that her character's actions are not in time with the other player's characters, which one of these would need to be reduced to improve Laura's online gaming experience. Is it bandwidth, storage, latency or memory? So with a question like this, it's always with a lag, with a delay. We're always looking at latency. The correct answer to this question is latency. B. A Blu-ray disc is listed as being able to store 50 gigabytes. that's gigabyte, not gigabytes, of data. Construct an expression to show how many bits are in 50 gigabytes. So, we start with 50 and we're creating an expression. We're not going to actually calculate it because remember, we don't have a calculator and any attempts at calculations are ignored anyway. So, we do 50. Then we multiply it by 1024. Now, as this is Gibby bytes, it's going to be 1024 to the power of 3 because 1024, okay, 50 multiplied by 1024 gets us to Mebby bytes, multiply it by 1024 to Kibby bytes, multiply it by 1024 to get us to bytes. So, if we're given a question like this, Gibby bytes, we need to multiply it by 1024 three times so it's 1024 cubed you can do to the power of three then we need to say there's eight bits in a byte so we multiply it by eight and that is the correct answer and that is three marks i have not attempted to work that out and that gives me three marks there c which one of these is used to identify games console on a network is it sim mac http or nfc okay the answer to this is media access control address the address which is created in the factory whatever device it is console device to give it its um, correct identification that is the mac address for that one let's scroll down and look at d identify the device that uses solid state storage i've got a usb i've got a magnetic hard drive i've got a blu-ray disc and I've got a magnetic tape. And again, look at that. There are no actual labels to that. So I've got to work it out myself. The only one, the possible answer that could be here is solid state is the USB stick here, which is the USB drive, which is the correct answer to that question. He explained one benefit of using magnetic storage with games console. Now this is quite an unusual question. You could easily get this wrong if you didn't read the question carefully. Because usually we assume um, a games console, we want a solid state drive. So we've been asked to write a benefit of magnetic. So the benefits really are that it is cheaper to make the device more marketable, really. That's the only kind of thing I'd, I'd want to write there. So that's the answer I've got for that one. E2, explain one benefit of using solid state storage with a games console. So now we're thinking about probably what most people would specify with their games console solid state. Um, we're thinking about faster access times. So games will lo load faster. It's more resilient. So if the games console gets knocked about, it won't damage the hard drive. So for my answer, I've gone with um, solid state here that has faster access time. So your game will load faster. F. Recommend one peripheral device that can be used with a games console to enhance the user experience when gaming. Give a reason for your answer. Okay, so thinking anything we'd use, we could say, for example, a VR headset, which will provide me with a more immersive experience, which is what I'm going to go for. So I'm going to say VR headset, one mark. Okay, reason for two marks to give me a more immersive gaming so there's my answer there, to give me a more immersive gaming experience. And what that means is um, I kind of feel more involved in the game, kind of kind of really involved in the game and actually in the game. So using the VR headset makes me feel like I'm actually in the game and actually involved in it. Players. G, Laura's Games Console uses a proprietary operating system. Which one of these describes a proprietary operating system? Right, the answer for this is A, it is owned by a company nothing else okay yes it's created by specialists doesn't use a firewall not hosted in the cloud the answer is a for this it is owned by a company so when you see the word proprietary it means it is owned by the company the very opposite of this is open source 
open source is not owned by a company and can be changed and edited however you want it. H. A smartphone can be used to play games and make calls. Take photos. Take the term used to describe this type of device. Okay, it is a multifunctional device. This is also something called convergence, where lots of devices are sort of merged into one. So we think about our smartphone. We've got a GPS in there. We've got calculator. We can make a call on there. We've got internet access. We've got lots of things that used to take several different devices can now be merged into one. That is a multifunctional device and that is an example of convergent. I, which one of these is the benefit of using a VPN for gaming? Okay, the answer to I is A, it provides access to geo-restricted games. So the VPN, virtual private network, can be used to, uh, in your country, to provide you access for, to games or content which wouldn't normally be available in your country. You kind of trick trick your computer into trick your connection into thinking that it is using um, another country's connection. It's from another country. Now this happens through the use of tunneling to provide us with a secure access to a private network. So the computer, your internet is like it's in another country. Jay, Laura receives an email this is the email a bit carefully okay there's three items in figure two that may cause Laura to believe this is an attempt at fraud so what are we looking at here the first thing to look at is where it's from does that look like an legitimate email address to you g 00 glmail.com so that's the first thing I could perhaps note down the email address is what I noticed first there Okay, let's have another look. What else have we got? Spelling mistakes. Okay, spelling errors cancelled there. As a teacher, that's kind of the first thing I, second thing I might notice is spelling mistakes. So spelling mistakes is probably a giveaway that that isn't from a bank or a legitimate financial, financial authority. And what else do I notice? Well, it's a dear account holder. So I don't actually know the person's name. It says dear account holder rather than the person's name is Laura. It doesn't say dear Laura or dear Ms. Whoever. It says dear account holder, which tells me that I don't actually know the person's name. So it's probably not going to be from a bank. What else can we see here? More spelling mistakes there. Authorizarian center. Okay. Account, account details on file. That would never be put into an email address. I'm sorry, an email that would never be put into an email like that for security purposes. That would always be blanked out. Request for security details. The bank would never ask that. And look at this here. Report PDF.exe. Uh, that is a real red flag there. So looking at that, if you clicked on that link and you downloaded that file, you'd most likely be downloading malware. Um, something suspicious, suspicious software. It could be a virus or what, spyware or whatever it is. It's going to cause you problems. So you'd never, ever click on that link. So those are many things that I can see there that leads me to believe that this is a suspicious email. And this is an example of, I would call this a phishing email. So K, what type of email is that? State the term for that type of email. It is phishing. Now, the mark scheme specifically says do not write spam. Spam is something very different. Spam is annoying email that goes out to lots of people trying to sell something. This isn't an example of spam. This is probably much worse than spam. It's a phishing email it's trying to get people to log on or download that file or log on to that web, go to that website address and enter their, enter their account details. And it's going to lead to a lot of financial problems for people if they actually do that. Okay. So that completes that question. That is 90 marks. I want to say thank you for watching the video. As always, please consider liking and subscribing. I'd really appreciate that. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.